Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortese. December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. And just as President Franklin Delano Roosevelt had predicted 69 years ago, it still does. Today's Pearl Harbor Day, and late this morning, American Legion Post 197 commemorated the occasion with a ceremony at Yarmouth Town Hall. Among the dozens of veterans in attendance were Gilbert Goodwin and Leroy Weber, two local men now deep into their 80s. But on December 7, 1941, they were young sailors. Leroy, 21, and serving aboard the USS Phoenix. Gilbert, just 18, and serving aboard the USS Curtis, two ships that were stationed at Pearl Harbor on that fateful day. And though time has claimed the vast majority of Pearl Harbor survivors, Gilbert and Leroy are still around to help us all remember why we pause and reflect today. Both men spent some time with us after this morning's ceremony and gave us their personal accounts of one of the most shocking days in American history. On USS Phoenix, the day of the, of the seventh, and my bomb was, uh, I was on the quarter deck waiting for my boat to come alongside to go over to the West Virginia. And if it had been five minutes later, I would like cross. I wouldn't be here. And uh, I, I, uh, I served on the Phoenix until uh, 19. Uh, 43, I think it was, I transferred off of her and went on a, a destroyer escort. But uh, when they did bomb us, I was on, like I say, I was on the quarter deck waiting to go on my boat. Uh, so I saw this this whole flight of planes come over the sub base, and I didn't realize what was going on, of course, until I saw the side of them and saw the meatball on them, and I thought, oh my God. And. Uh, after that, uh, it was just a matter of going to my battle station, which was uh, I was a damage control. And if my ship got no damage, I just it was sitting there waiting and uh, had nothing to do, you know. Just all I could, I could hear all the bombing going on and stuff. But, uh, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good day, I could say that. Well, it was such a big shock. It, you know, unexpected, not ready. Uh, nobody knew they were going to be bombed or attacked in such a manner. Sure. But it didn't take long. I was on watch with the uh, uh, officer of the deck, so he's in charge of the whole ship, basically. And all I was was a seaman that was on duty with him that if he wanted some something he'd say messenger go do that so, yeah. so I had a very minute job but he was the one that first noticed the Japanese dropping the torpedoes and uh, uh, he uh, uh, asked me to to sound general quarters which was that and of course I my general quarter station wasn't where I was on watch mm -hmm. so and I told you earlier, I went uh, up to the bridge where I was a 50 caliber machine gunner and the Japanese dropped a bomb and it went right behind where I was on watch with the OD is the hangar. So I'm on here on the back stern with him and he's at the gangway and right up above us on the boat deck is a 5 inch gun. Yep. I went to the my battle station, 50 caliber machine gunner. I mentioned earlier about how scared the poor guy was, and I had to go kind of give him a kick to get going. But why would I, at age 18, be any more? But I, I a way affected me. I was bad, but it it destroyed my uh, later on. It destroyed my nervous system. It, you know, I got out of the service because of my my nerves and the shaking. I couldn't, my head used to shake like this, you know. And I, but anyway, and I still have nerve trouble. But I, I you know, and on all honesty, I have to say, I, I wasn't afraid of dying. Really? I I would say it was my Christian upbringing that had a lot to do with that. That's but, a pretty mature thought at 18 years old. Yeah, that's right. You know what goes through a youngster's mind like that? But you're so you're mad, and uh, you you hope everybody uh, 
takes care of these people that are attacking us. And but if I, the only thing I'd like to impress upon you is the fact that nothing was ready. There was no ammunition available. Every gun was locked up, and it being a weekend, half of the crew was basically allowed to go on the beach. So very few people aboard, sure. no ammunition, and then I can only tell you in my case, the, I had to kick the runner to go get the ammunition for me on the bridge. Because I have a, you know, you're a machine gunner, but you have a runner that goes to the hoist, brings the ammunition to you, and then you put it in and shoot it. Well, that never happened because the poor guy was so scared. But it didn't matter whether you were a seaman or whatever, if, I, if you were a lieutenant commander with stripes, you were just as scared. I'm sure. Uh, you know, I saw this fellow that was working for me, <laughs> and I'm only 18, and he he, he can't get the, gun, the, the bullets for me so that I could shoot the planes, which were just so close, you know. You know, I, I think it's forgotten, most of it. Uh, Pearl Harbor, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too long time ago. Too, you know, many, many, many years ago. And the emotion that goes through a young person, uh, uh, completely different, that goes through my emotion now at 88. I'm sure. <laughs> sure. Leroy, what, what do you what do you think in terms of do you, do you do you feel like September 11th because it's more top of mind overshadows I think people's you know, memories of Pearl Harbor? Quite a similarity for the fact that all these people in this building were trapped and uh, they they had to have uh, the emotions that they had to go through must have been terrific. They must have really they, it was a terrible shock. I'm sure. I feel they should remember because it was the beginning of the war. You know, what started all this? Pearl Harbor. An enemy attacking us. That's, that's the beginning of all the rest of the stuff that you see or seen through our lifetime. Sure. Well, that's my strong feeling. I would say most it's forgotten unless you were there. But uh, it's too long, too far, too too many years ago that it happened. Well, certainly. that's the way I feel. I don't know how you feel, but well, I feel like it's an honor for me to talk to you guys because mm -hmm. you're you're the first hand folks that are that are still alive, yeah, alive, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and there are well, fewer and fewer of you all the time. Yeah. Leroy, I wonder, I wonder about you. Why do you feel like uh, Pearl Harbor is worth remembering and commemorating now and into the future? Well, I think it showed what a great nation we are because. Here we are, and we caught, we might say, what, defenseless because they got, got us unawares, and uh, they wiped out most most good part of our heavy ships and stuff in the Navy, but we did come back, and I have the uh, satisfaction of knowing that every ship that took part in the, their attack on us was sunk. And we built, we rebuilt every, almost every one except the Arizona. And uh, it just shows you that we are a great nation. And when we have, when chips are down, we're there. We can fight. There aren't many Gilbert Goodwins and Leroy Webers left on this earth, so we were honored to have the chance to bring you their perspectives today. And now, let's take a look at this week's meetings. On Wednesday, December 8th, the Old Kings Highway Historic District Commission meets at the West Barnstable Community Building on Route 149 at 7 p.m. Thursday, December 9th at 4 p.m., the Barnstable Historical Commission meets in the Selectmen's Conference Room. And earlier in the day at 9 a.m., Site Plan Review has a hearing in the Town Hall Hearing Room. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.